Hello, this is a review of Chemistry Quiz 3, um, Chapter 7 and 8. Um, so we'll go through go through each question here. And we have the um, question about the compound uh, with the 24% uh, carbon, 4% uh, hydrogen, the 71% uh, chlorine, and then with the molecular mass of the 98 uh, 0.96 grams. So first you uh, have each of those compounds written as a percentage. Uh, you assume 100 grams and then you can write each compound then as a number of grams. Uh, you then multiply each one of those by that uh, molecular mass uh, of that, or I should say atomic weight of that particular atom. So here's carbon for that one and then we have hydrogen uh, added and then the last one is chlorine. Um, so then that gives you the ratio, um, which then you need to simplify down to the simplest ratio. Um, so you get the empirical formula um, of C1H2Cl1. Uh, uh, then you need to then determine that molecular formula uh, is then uh, taking the molecular, making the, well, t getting the atomic masses, and we, then we know that, that we have the C1, uh, H2, and uh, Cl1 to give us a, uh, an empirical uh, formula weight of the 49.47 grams. Uh, then we know that the molecular weight is given as the 98.96. Uh, then we know for every single um, mole of the empirical uh, we have the 49 that was determined above, so then we know that ratio is 2. So then we know the overall ratio then, or the empirical formula, is the C2H4Cl2. So that's how that one is determined. Um, number 2 uh, says calculate the number of uh, molecules uh, present in 21 grams of the compound to the right. Uh, so this compound shows us that that is uh, the three hydrogens and one phosphorus, so that's pH3. Um, then that pH3, then when you calculate that uh, molecular mass, we have 30 for the phosphorus and three of the hydrogens. Uh, so we have a molecular weight of 33.997 grams per mole. If we know we have then 122 grams of it, you know, one mole of it that we just calculated uh, uh, weighs the 33.997 grams. Then we know that in one mole, there is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Um, so then those cancel out, the grams cancel, uh, the moles cancel, and we're left with molecules on top. Um, so then when you multiply the uh, 122 times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by the 33.9, uh, you get uh, 2.16 times 10 to the 24th molecules uh, of that particular compound. Uh, number three, you have a uh, sample of sodium sulfate uh, that contains 2.3 times 10 to the 23rd sodium cations. How many moles of sodium sulfate, of the sulfate anions, will be present in the sample? And so then you need to then use that given amount of the uh, 2.3 uh, times 10 to the 23rd sodium ions. And then you then determine the ratio from the, equ from the equation, uh, from the actual formula, that for every one sulfate ion, you have two sodium ions. So that's this middle part is that ratio for every two sodiums you have one sulfate so then the number of sodiums will cancel and you'll have numbers of sulfates and you know that for every one mole of anything in this case one mole of the sulfate ion we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those things so in this case we convert that from uh, the ions um, or the, the cations uh, it's not really molecules there that should be cations um, so we, like the, the the anions in this case, sorry, anions, uh, instead of molecules, that anion for one mole 
then we then know that we have uh, 0.19 moles because the uh, sodium cancels with the with the uh, ions of sodium cancel with the ions of sodium. Uh, the ions of sulfate can cancel with the ions of sulfate in one mole, and then we get the number of moles of the sulfate ions that are left over. Uh, number four, uh, we have a sample of the hydrogen selenium. Uh, it contains how many moles of atoms, so we want moles uh, of the atoms. We're going to calculate that x, that number of moles. Um, so we have the 205 grams of the hydrogen uh, selenium. Uh, we then have the molecular weight, and here we have the calculation of the molecular weight. We have two hydrogens plus the one selenium uh, to give us the 80.97 grams. Uh, then that is the weight of one mole of that hydrogen selenium. Uh, then when we have one mole of hydrogen selenium, we get two moles of hydrogen because there's two in two hydrogens in each one mole of the molecule. Um, so then the grams of hydrogen and selenium cancel, the moles of hydrogen and selenium cancel, and then we're left with moles of hydrogen because we want moles of hydrogen. So we have 5.06 moles of hydrogen uh, that are going to then um, can be calculated from that sample. Uh, number five uh, uses the uh, activity series where uh, we have the more active elements on top and the less active ones on the bottom. A more active element will replace a less active element. So in this first example where we have aluminum and um, hydrochloric acid, since aluminum um, is above hydrogen, it's greater than hydrogen on that particular chart, um, so we know that that's greater, so we know that that reaction will occur. The aluminum will replace uh, the hydrogen. We make it an aluminum chloride. We know that the Al is a plus 3 um, from the periodic table. Uh, and the common ion chart, we know Cl is minus 1, so that, that creates that compound. We know hydrogen is diatomic, so that creates that. Um, so now that we know have those two compounds correct, and we can go back and balance, uh, we have... Uh, three CLs uh, on this side, um, and we have, uh, um, so we have to then, we initially we put a three over here, uh, we then would have uh, our H's, uh, we have to then have three halves of our H's, so then once we go through and have three halves, then we multiply everything uh, by two, and that would give us two aluminums, and then six of the hydrochloric acids, two of the aluminum chlorides and three of the hydrogens. Uh, and, and letter B here, um, here we find that since uh, silver um, is below hydrogen, um, it will then silver is less than hydrogen, we will have no reaction occur um, because it's below there. So the silver will not replace the hydrogen um, in that particular reaction. Uh, we have aluminum and potassium bromide. Once again, aluminum um, is below potassium, um, so aluminum will not replace it. So then, once again, there's no reaction there uh, because it's below. Uh, then now we're looking at magnesium uh, compared to copper. Uh, here we have magnesium, and it happens to be above copper, so it will replace it, and we'll end up with magnesium chloride. Uh, magnesium is a plus two, chlorine is a minus one, so we need two of them. So that's correct. We're making copper solid. So it's copper as is. So we can go back and balance. We have one magnesium, those balance. We have two chlorines, those balance, and one copper, and that balances. So that happens to be a balanced reaction there. Uh, question number six, we got benzene uh, reacting with nitric acid. Uh, we have two products that are formed. One of them is water. And then we're determining the other one. Uh, the second product is 34% carbon, uh, and then 1.4% hydrogen, 19.7% uh, nitrogen, and 45% oxygen. What's the balanced reaction for this particular equation? So once again, we have our percentages. 
We start up with those percentages. We then um, assume 100 grams uh, for our uh, sample uh, with uh, that amount uh, per. So then we can go through with our 100 grams uh, from our from our percentages, multiply by the molecular weight. So you have 12, 1, uh, 14 for the nitrogen, and 16 for the oxygen. Uh, that gets us our first set of ratios. Uh, then we multiply. Then we divide by our lowest number, which is the 1.4, and that gets us our simplest ratios. Um, so then we know that the empirical formula then is going to be the C2H1N1O2 from those uh, simple ratios. So that gets us our empirical formula. And now we go through and calculate the molecular weight of that empirical formula right here. We have our two carbons our one hydrogen, our one nitrogen, and two oxygens. So that gets us 71 as our uh, molecular weight of our empirical formula. Uh, we were told that the molar mass um, was uh, 213 grams up here. So then we could take that um, 213 grams of our molar mass and find out how many of our empirical formulas, how many empirical masses will go into that. We find here that there are three that will go into that. So we take our empirical formula, multiply it by three to get our molecular formula, and that's the C6H3N3O6. That can then go back into uh, making our balanced equation. We start up by putting in the known benzene that we have, uh, the known uh, nitric acid. We're told it made water, and then our final molecular formula goes in there. Uh, then we then balance. Uh, we know that we're going to have um, C6, and that's those balance there. We know we're going to have um, H3, and we have some H's there, so we know we're going to balance that. Uh, we have N3, so then we know for sure that this is going to be times 3 over here to get our 3Ns. That will help us with our hydrogens and our oxygens later. Uh, we have our 3 oxygens to make 3 times 3 is 9, so we have 6 here, so then we need we need three over here to get us a total of nine. So we know we put a three in front of there, and that's what happens then to balance out um, our six hydrogens here, plus our three here gives us our nine total. Six, and then three is our nine. So that one is balanced. We have our question number seven. Uh, sulfuric acid is produced commercially by the following reactions. We have sulfur uh, that is burned in oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. So that's S plus O yields SO2. Uh, in general, um, if you look in your book, you will notice that uh, also if you had put S8 here, that would also be correct because that is the, the, um, the physical structure of sulfur. That's how it lives in nature. But S is also acceptable there as well. I have sulfur dioxide. These to further react with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And that's what we have here. We have our sulfur dioxide with oxygen, which remember is diatomic. And then sulfur trioxide was the molecules. So you have to start out with those first. Then you go back and balance. Uh, we have our SS. We begin with there. Then we have our O2. Uh, well, we need three of them. so. 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, we have um, 2 here, plus 2 times 2 is 4. That gives us our 6. So that would be balanced then. Uh, we have our sulfur trioxide reacting uh, with uh, sulfuric acid to produce the pyrosulfuric acid, which is listed there. So we have, once again, we have our sulfur trioxide, uh, all sulfuric acid. X come from 8, and this is sulfate. So to make a sulfate acid, you'd add the H hydrogen to it. So that's where the hydrochloric acid comes from, is the ick from the hydrochloric produces that 8, and that's where it came from, from the sulfate. So that's where that comes from, the sulfate. And then hydrogen makes it sulfuric acid. 
Uh, once again, you can balance that reaction. It happens to be balanced as is. So that one is okay as is. Once again, then you use that pyrosulfuric acid to react with water to make uh, sulfuric acid when you're all done. And so you have that pyrosulfuric acid with the water to make two sulfuric acids. And you balance those out. Uh, number eight, uh, use the diagram in the reaction below to calculate the number of water molecules produced. Uh, here we have the number of molecules going in. So the balanced reaction tells us that we have uh, the ratio of uh, C2H2 to O2. Here are all the O2s. Um, and then we have the CH, C2H2s here. And so uh, we know our ratio should be a 2 to 5 ratio. It just happens to be when you look at all the numbers of C2H2s, we have 6. Here's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it just so happens that that ratio of 2 to 5, which is in this case 6 to 15, bears out. So that is the right ratio of molecules to one another. So when you produce your product, you would then draw either with colors or with symbols um, our 12 um, CO2s and our six waters that are made um, in that 4 to 2 ratio. And so the answer is then how much water is produced. Uh, that would be a total of six molecules of water are produced from this amount and so the idea there is that the balanced reaction governs how that reaction occurs. Um, if there had been more oxygen, for example, if there had been extra amount of oxygen gas, then the C2H12 would limit the reaction and would still follow that same ratio. And you still would only make the six waters because this would govern uh, the ratios. What's important here is that the balanced equation governs what can be produced and that is what governs and how it can happen. So it doesn't really matter what you had here necessarily as long as you had enough stuff to follow this exact ratio whatever you did have would have to follow that ratio in order to produce the products. And that's the key there is that that balanced reaction is all important. Uh, question number nine uh, talks about um, which region it corresponds to the heat of reaction and the heat of reaction is what's left over uh, when you go from the reactants uh, to your products um, and when you do that process you have that heat of activation right there so that's what it takes to activate the reaction and then it comes down to form the products the net heat so what you put in uh, and that difference from where you're at when you get out um, is that heat of reaction. What does the reaction take to occur? That's the heat. So that's letter B, the heat of the reaction. In the following reaction, you have uh, magnesium displacing iron. So one item displaces another. So that's a single displacement. Uh, natural gas is primarily composed of methane. We said in class that butane was in the lighters. Uh, propane was in grass, gas grills. Octane is a uh, part of gasoline. And then methane, CH4, um, is a principal component then of natural gas. What comes out of your wall if you have a gas stove in your house, for example. It's used in, to heat water, hot water heaters as well. Uh, how many moles of chlorine gas are present in the 18.4 grams of the calcium chloride? Uh, chlorine ions are present. Um, you start out with then the uh, molecular formula. You have the, the calcium at 40, the chlorine, uh, two of those at 35.45 to get you the molar mass of uh, calcium chloride. You know that you have the 14 grams of calcium chloride to begin with. You then just calculate it over here, that 110, 
uh, 0.98, that 111 then goes in here, significant figures, and that's with the weight of one mole, and you know that for every one mole of the molecule, you get two moles of chlorine, um, so then you get the uh, 100, you get the 0.3315, which is uh, rounds up to the 0.332, uh, which is number one there. So that is uh, the review of quiz uh, number three.